All right, welcome to another episode of Midlife First. Today I have Ian here with me. We're going to talk about where and how you can buy film to start your film photography journey. Uh, so I think the first thing or first place that you should consider going to is actually your photography, local photography stores. Yeah, right. and also your you should find out where you can develop your film first. Mm, because mm. Uh, if you go around buying film and then you don't know where to develop, I think it's a bit... Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Or like yeah. if let's say the development place is very far from you, yeah. maybe you may not even want to start this journey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So one good tip about getting film is that <clears throat> your local uh, development lab mm. will sell film. Yeah. yeah, and usually they sell it for very affordable rates and they keep it usually fresh because there's always a turnover, people are always buying. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about the film being like expired and being like in the industry, they know how to store the film well. So some of them would have refrigerators where they store all these films. So you shouldn't just look at price when buying film, you should look at how it's stored, uh, whether it's been there for very long, what kind of conditions it is, whether the box is coming all damaged to you. You know, so these are things you need to also factor in when buying. And local photography stores usually know what they're doing. Yep. So they do an amazing job. So they, and of course, supporting local always helps that, you know. Yeah. yeah. So um, another place you can consider buying film from uh, is of course uh, online stores. So generally speaking, uh, there are like the major retailers like Amazon. Um, so um, if you type in like Kodak Film into the search box, you will find different types of film that is available and at different price points. Um, what I notice about Amazon, for instance, is sometimes the film isn't stored well. You might get expired rolls of film. So just be very careful of that. If it's expired, of course, you can perhaps ask a refund from Amazon. So the thing about Amazon, right, mm. is that Amazon does not sell you the film directly. Sometimes it's from resellers yes. who have like a store on Amazon. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so you never know which store is selling you the film unless mm. you go in and check carefully. Yeah, so just like yeah. any online retailer, look at the user ratings, you know. Yeah. People would have rated, the uh, people who bought previously would have rated whether the film is in uh, good condition or not. Look at the reviews, read from them, look at the price. And one more thing is to look carefully at the product itself. Uh, sometimes you think you're getting a good deal, but actually your film might be just 24 exposure. So this one actually has 36 <coughs> exposure. Uh, so it might look like you're getting a good deal, but if you're getting 24 exposure rolls, then actually you're losing money in the long run. Okay, yeah. so one interesting thing that you can do when you're online, right, is to just check the pricing. Mm. So the pricing on Amazon is very interesting. Uh, it varies wildly. Yes, yes, it does. So, let's say uh, you get this uh, pack of Ultramax, pack of three for $50, right? Mm. So, you need to go in and then uh, you need to just check whether the shipping is free or you have to pay like 50 bucks for shipping. Yeah. Because sometimes the shipping costs 50 bucks. Yes. Uh, especially yeah. if it's from a far away location. Yeah. Um, another thing is, uh, sometimes when it's being shipped from a far away location, there is a risk that uh, any parcels that go yeah. through postage will get x-rayed and film being very sensitive to x-rays Maybe you want to minimize that. So that's yeah. that's another reason why we like to support our local, local shops. photography shops, you know uh, Another option of course is not to buy from big retailers like yeah. Amazon You can actually buy from local online retailers as well. So in Singapore, we have this uh, like flea market online, which is called carousel um, so you can look for sellers, same thing, you look at their user ratings uh, and then you can look at the films they carry. So OKB is one example, I think Hands On Film is also on Carousel. Uh, some uh, local sellers uh, are, have their own websites actually. So if you think about it, uh, like if you go to 8 Story Trees website, you'll actually see a lot of film and a lot of variety as well. Uh, of course, as a beginner, we suggest you stick to those basic uh, brands such as Kodak, Fujifilm, Ilford, um, and Lomography. Uh, but these are excellent places you can buy. You can also compare the prices online. Yeah, so one good shop is 8 Story Tree. So they sell, I think, the widest variety of film in Singapore in, in a store locally here. Mm. So you can just compare prices. Their prices are quite good actually. So yeah. The prices are reasonable yeah. and uh, you can actually order online and pick it up in their store. Uh, when you're at the store, you can actually check on all the films they have. They have a lot. So like if you look at the tabs, there's yeah. like 23 tabs with different types of film yeah. that is available. So if you just look at the tabs on the bottom, it goes to like 23 pages. Yeah, but yeah. some of the hot some, ones are sold out like yeah. Fuji, yeah. Superior. Yeah. So if you are looking for specific kinds of film, 
they might only be available in specific environments. So mm. for example, uh, Fujifilm Extra was available in Singapore for a while, but currently I don't think you can find it very easily. And if you're looking for like Fujifilm 400, uh, is it premium? Premium, yeah. Yeah, you might have to even go to Japan. So that's what Ian yeah. did, lah, right? Yeah. Man, Japan is also still sold out. So I, I got some friends who, who went there, I yeah. asked them to try and find some premium, right? Yeah. It's totally sold out now. Wow. Even extra is sold out. Yeah, and I, and I know yeah. that if you go and buy in Japan, they also limit the yes, number yes, of yes, rolls yes. you can buy. So don't don't expect yeah. that you can buy like 10 rolls back from your trip to Japan. Yeah, yeah you might be limited to one or two rolls. Yeah. So if you really want to buy 10 rolls back, you might need to visit the photography <laughs> store like five, six times on yeah. separate days. Lah, you know? Yeah, so this is another thing you need to uh, consider when buying film. Uh, once you've bought the film, uh, you should store it in a cool uh, and dark environment, preferably. I mean, don't store it out in the sun. sun yeah. yeah. And uh, whenever you buy the film, usually it'll have like an expiration date written yeah. at the back here. So check it. You know, if the film is expired, then maybe you want to return it back to the store or the online seller that you bought it from. Um, another thing is like color negatives such as Kodak Gold, it's quite resilient. So don't have to be you don't have to mollycoddle the, the film too much. I would say all the films here, you could store it out. Yeah, I mean, not, in, not in the fridge. Yeah, if you shoot it within yeah. a reasonable time frame. Before the expiry date, yeah. I think it's all right. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. But let's say if you want to uh, store it for very long, you can freeze the film, uh, put it in the freezer. Yeah. But uh, before you take it out, you should uh, let it thaw in your refrigerator first. And then after maybe an hour in the refrigerator, let it thaw at room temperature. Maybe uh, for a day. Yeah, just, maybe, just make sure it's not yeah. hot. Yeah, and also yeah. you don't want it to be cold when you open it from its packaging. Yeah. Uh, because if it is cold, what will happen is condition, condensation sets in. And that will actually make all the layers of the film stick together. And then your camera can't really roll through the film or you'll get weird wet spots when you take your yeah. images. Yeah, so... Wet, talking about wet spots, right? Mm. That time you bought some film that was like repackaged. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I bought some re-spooled film. Um, what happened is uh, when they re-spool this, sometimes they uh, manually remove certain layers. Yeah. Uh, what I noticed is on the film door, there was some residue left behind. It was like a bit yeah. sticky. Yeah, it was a bit me. sticky and yeah. all that. So this is a risk you take when you buy film from more, like, more of those boutique films yeah, that yeah, yeah. resellers sell. So as a beginner, I don't think you should try those mm. funky films uh, yet because yeah. sometimes the quality may vary and you might be disappointed with the results uh, if the, the film wasn't that, that well spooled or it, it might have been exposed to light and there might be some yes. light streaks or whatever. And also if let's say this is your first film roll that you're going to use, get something that's very standardized yeah. like Kodak Go. The reason being is that you want to make sure you iron out any kinks with the camera first. Because you don't want to have like errors caused yeah. by faulty film. Yeah. Uh, then you think something is actually wrong with yeah. your camera when in fact it is not. So I had a friend uh, who like recently bought a camera. <laughs> then they put like an old expired roll through and it all came out with like everything was blank except one image. So he was so worried. So that you don't know whether it's the camera or the yeah, film. Yeah, but at first he thought it was the camera's yeah. fault. Then I told him just maybe run through a normal roll yeah. and see. And then... It, Turns out the camera was fine. You know, it yeah. was just the, the problem with the roll. Yeah. But as a beginner, you might not be able to troubleshoot yeah. so wisely. Especially if the, the film has had light leaks or something. Yes, like. exactly. Then you wouldn't know if your camera is good or the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't know. You just <laughs> wouldn't know. So stick to like a basic film for at least your first roll when you're testing a new camera as well. Yeah. yeah. So these are the places you can consider when yeah. buying your film from. Um, there are other places like, I guess, uh, uh, like those markets and mm. stuff like that. Uh, but just be wary of how the film was stored and yeah. how long it's been kept. Uh, flea market, I'd be a bit wary as well, especially if it's your first time. But generally, if you buy like Kodak and Fuji, generally, mm -hmm. it stores quite well in room temperature. Yeah. So you don't have to keep it in the fridge. Uh, if it was kept in maybe 20 to 30 degrees, it's still okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long yeah. as it wasn't baking in the sun for, yeah. for a day. As long as it's not yeah. sitting in the sun or being exposed to yeah. a lot of light. I think you should be quite fine. So buying film is quite a simple thing, uh, but these are the usual places we buy from. Uh, two of us, we like to go to our local photography yep. stores. Uh, so if you want to keep to something that's true and tested, just do that. So yeah. most photography stores will sell them. If they sell film cameras, highly likely they will yeah. probably sell some film. And yeah, definitely your development labs, all of them will sell film. Yeah, because that's yeah. just how, it's just convenient, you know. Yeah. When you're there, you'll drop a few rolls in and you'll buy a few rolls. So it makes perfect sense for them to actually store up yeah. uh, a few rolls. And usually the cheapest 
it's not from online but at your development lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is, it is. Because I think for them, they probably earn their uh, revenue from yeah. the development as opposed to the film sales. Yeah. So they usually will try to call, uh, price the film as affordably as possible. Yep. Okay. So, so one more thing also. Ah. As a beginner, try not to buy funky films like this Harmon film. <laughs> yes. um, because the lab cannot scan this film properly. Yes. So yeah. you yeah, you will encounter some issues and you may be a bit disappointed with the outcome. Yes. And it may discourage you from further photography. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Phoenix is an yeah. experimental film. Yeah. Uh, so just be very, very careful yeah. with it. Uh, of course, if you shot a few roles and then you want to experiment with yeah. these uh, more uh, funny films, then go ahead. Yeah, yeah. then then you can have you can play into their experimental nature and try to take some creative shots. Yeah. Okay. So okay. That's I think that's all for what you need to know about how to buy a film role. Uh, so we'll catch you in the next episode. If you love this episode, please uh, like and subscribe down here somewhere down here. Uh, if you have any comments, we'd love to hear them as well. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Bye-bye.